here and then we had the following two, um, two chemists worked independently from one another. Uh, but we came, they, we came across, they came across this theory called the Bronsted-Lowry uh, theory of acids and bases. And they were there, they came in to explain where, you know, the problems lied with the Arrhenius method that now would work with all acids and bases. So, an acid is a substance from which a proton, the H plus ion, can be removed. So we can take away a hydrogen proton and put it somewhere else and give it to one of the other uh, molecules. Right? A base is a substance that can remove a proton from an acid. So one's going to either give the proton, one's going to pretty much receive the proton. And so that's really where the real acid, real bases lie. But again, that's still the, the idea of the OH, right, for our bases is there. Um, the, now it's no longer the hydrogen positive, right, the hydrogen ion, it's actually the hydronium ion. According to the bronsted lowry theory, there is only one requirement for an acid-base reaction. One substance must provide a proton and another substance must receive that same proton. So one of them is gonna give up the hydrogen proton, the other one must pick that up. Right? So the one that picks it up right, is what's going to become the acid. The one that gives it up is what's going to be the base. So technically, anything can act like an acid, anything can act like a base. So an acid-base reaction involves the transfer of a proton. That's the, uh, the key point here with the bronsted lowry And you need to be able to identify it, right? You had a reaction, you had a dissociation method. Can you tell from that, you know, if it was either Arrhenius or bronsted lowry So according to their theory, any substance can behave as an acid, but only if another substance behaves as a base at the same time, right? So anything can be an acid, anything can be a base as long as they behave that way which means one's gonna give up a proton, the other one's going to pick up that, that proton. If they don't do that, then of course, it's not acting as the acid-base pair. Okay. So any substance can behave as a base, again, but only if the other substance behaves as an acid at the same time. So it's that vice versa method. So here we have uh, hydrochloric acid and water. Obviously, we know which one is the acid, the hydrochloric acid, right? So we know this has got to be the acid, which means water has to act as a base. Right? So water's got to act as the base, which means only one of them it has to give up the proton, the hydrogen proton, to the other, and the other one's going to pick it up. Right? And we know that what's going to happen is the following, which gave it up? The acid, right? The acid gave up that proton to the so-called base. Right? So that H donated the proton to the water. Right? The water picked up that the, the, the hydrogen proton to form the hydronium ion. That's what we're determining as the concentration for that for the acid. Right? Which means if that's the acid, the other's got to be the base. And so what we have is we have the, the following terms, okay? Two molecules or ions that are related by the transfer of protons are called conjugate acid-base pairs, right? So what we have, conjugate meaning they're linked together. So what we have here, we have something called a conjugate base, so a new term that we need to know. Of an acid is a par particle which remains when a proton is removed from the acid. A conjugate acid of a base is a particle that results when the base receives a proton from the acid. So we know that the HCl was our acid. We know that the water is gonna act as a base. Okay? And in return, we've just formed the following acid, right? the hydronium ion. And the hydronium ion is considered the conjugate acid because it is picked up it is picked up the um, the proton and which gave up right the HCl or the Cl now that's, that's on its own is considered the conjugate base 
because it was the one that actually gave up the proton. Right? So if we look at this, the conjugate base of an acid is the particle that remains when the proton is removed. So the proton was removed from HCl and that's what's left. So that's what makes it the conjugate base. The conjugate acid, as we said, is the one that actually receives the proton. The water received the proton. So because it received the proton, it's considered the conjugate acid. According to the Bronsted-Lowry theory, every acid has a conjugate base. Every base has a conjugate acid. Okay, so what we have is here, this equation, no different than what we've had or what we just, you know, looked at. Okay? So, this acid is going to give up the hydrogen. Okay? The one that picks up the hydrogen now becomes the conjugate acid. Well, the one that gave it up has become the conjugate acid. Base. So it's really important that you do um, understand these concepts. Uh, conjugate base and conjugate acid of an acid-base pair are linked by the transfer of protons. So remember, the uh, proton got transferred from the HCl to the water. The water picked up right, that hydrogen ion, thus becoming the H3O. Because it picked it up, it's considered the conjugate acid. Because this one gave up that hydrogen here, it's known as the conjugate base. Now, the conjugate base of the acid-base pair has one less hydrogen than the acid. It also has one more negative charge than the acid. So the conjugate uh, acid of an acid-base pair has one more hydrogen than the base. It also has one less uh, negative charge than the base. So what we have here, notice now, we've got the positive charge and negative charge. Right? So the positive charge associated with the uh, conjugate acid, uh, the negative charge with the conjugate base. 